Yes, it certainly is a very, very fascinating mission. Um, I'm speaking to you now from the waters of the Indian Ocean. It's quite sweltering here. And um, I've been observing the work of a British-led expedition whose aim is to look into the uncharted depths of the waters of the Indian Ocean. Um, at the moment, we're off the remote atoll of San Joseph in the waters of the Seychelles where the British-led Necton team is conducting a series of deep water experiments, deep water uh, research dives um, and data, data gathering experiments to basically check on the health of the ocean around us. Now, the Seychelles government is working together with the uh, scientific mission here and the Seychelles aim is to protect up to 30% of its marine environment by the year 2020 and a lot of the data that is uh, being gathered from this mission will be used to uh, support the Seychelles in, that, in their aim. Now, until this mission began, no one had ever dived more than 30 meters beneath the surface of the ocean in the Seychelles. Well, this mission now is diving even deeper thanks to some submersibles. And I can now speak directly to Dr. Lucy Woodle, who is the chief scientist with the mission here, who is in a submersible underneath our ship, some 110 meters below. Hello, Dr. Woodle, can you hear me? I can, hello. Hello. Um, Dr. Woodle, tell me, um, it's quite a feat to get to the point where you could put a scientist such as yourself down beneath the waters of the Indian Ocean. Um, tell us about the journey to get there, please. Absolutely. So yeah, a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Some of them are on board, some of them are still on land. Um, everything that we've had to do has been from getting the right uh, partners involved, to getting these wonderful festivals that I'm sitting in, um, getting a ship, and getting all of the other equipment. Not only are we down here in these high-tech submersibles, but we also are measuring the quality and the state of the water through um, other equipment. We're measuring um, what is at the surface of the water with some nets. So it's been a long time putting the right people together, the right equipment and expertise to make sure we've had a really successful mission. That's, that's fascinating research there, Lucy. And um, I wonder, what, what can you tell us about the, uh, your findings so far when you've been diving deep? Well, it's been such a privilege to be here, but it's also a responsibility because we have to make sure that we document everything that we're seeing um, so that it can be used for generations to come. Um, my first impressions are that each of the islands that we've explored have been very different. The shape of the sea floor below the islands um, have been very different from very places that are very steep, um, like Astove, and places that are a little more shallow, um, like Poivre, the last site we visited. Um, we've seen a different range of predators and fish. Um, with those on Aldabra being the much more diverse and abundant communities. Um, this is really exciting because it shows that some of the protection that's been afforded in Aldabra seems to be working. We're seeing those really large predators. That's very exciting. Now, part of your investigation is, is to look for effects of climate change. Um, could you explain to us, please, the, the, the importance of recognize the, uh, recognizing the effects of climate change on the ocean and the, the, the influence um, on the population surrounding the ocean? Yes, it is important for us to understand what's happening um, here, even in the deep oceans. So climate change has an impact, not just of increasing the temperature of the water that most people kind of know about, but it also decreases the oxygen available in the water and it increases the acidity. And those aspects all combined mean that it's very hard for some of the communities that are thriving right now to continue to do so. Um, so what we need to do is we need to document what's happening right now um, so that with predictions of changing um, environmental conditions, we can understand what might happen in the future. Now, this is really important for all of us, um, but for those who are living around the coastal communities of the Indian Ocean, and in fact, all of the globe's oceans, because it's 
impacting everywhere. Um, it's incredibly important. Our coral reef systems protect our coastal communities from um, large storms, um, and we've seen that more recently in areas where we've had really healthy coral reef systems that are very vibrant communities, those communities on land, those human populations are protected from some of the worst storms. We know that with climate change, the um, increase of storms that are of high intensity is going to get more. So this is going to be very important for us sitting here trying to look at the biological communities, but even for people who never get in the water, it's going to be impacting their lives. Dr. Woodall, thank you very much for that fascinating insight, and uh, we wish you well with your continuation with your scientific research. Now, of course, it's not just with scientists' eyes that they're looking at the life, uh, the marine life under the water. Um, each submersible is equipped with a range of underwater cameras and sampling equipment to capture um, uh, to capture data from beneath the waves. And I'm pleased now to welcome the head of the Nekdon mission, Oliver Steeds. Oliver, thank you very much. Um, behind us now, we can see another of your submersibles, which you're using for these uh, research missions. Could you tell us something about the equipment that you're using here, please? So these submersibles are uh, built by Triton, an American company, and they have the maximum operating depth of 300 meters. Uh, they have a transparent spherical uh, pressure hole that you can see, which gives our scientists the, uh, an unparalleled view for observation. And observation is the beginning of scientific inquiry. So we've adapted the subs in different ways. We have one which is adapted purely for survey work with a range of different cameras mounted on it from our partners, Teledyne Marine. And the other one is mounted for sampling operations. So it's got a very high definition camera to document the biodiversity that we discover, as well as different equipment for measuring uh, a whole variety of different parameters in the ocean. Now, the submersibles, of course, are not the only uh, type of uh, cutting edge technology that you're using on the mission. Um, could you explain about some of the other research activities you're, you're conducting with uh, technological equipment? So we have a whole suite of different technologies, including some new technologies that we've pioneered with our partners. Uh, we have a survey boat which goes out to help map the, the seabed, and that gives us 3D maps of the environment that we're operating in. That's critical for safe operations, but also productive operations. We know exactly where to drop our submersibles and also our remotely operated vehicles. We've got two um, ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, which again have sampling equipment and the cameras on them, so we can document the biodiversity down there. In addition, we've got uh, other systems for measuring the currents. These, we're on these little uh, sea mounts, these little mountains, and the currents whipping around them like, like uh, gusts of wind, if you like. So we need to know how they're affecting our operations uh, and the biodiversity down there. So that's just a few of the technological uh, advances that we've made as part of our research program here with Necton. Oliver, thank you very much indeed for that. And clearly there's a, there's a wealth of activity going on, under, uh, on around this ship. Scientists are busy um, all day and into the night. And um, in fact, the work doesn't just stop when this mission, this particular mission comes to an end in a week's time, concluding seven weeks of research activities in the Indian Ocean of the Seychelles. In fact, really, that's just the beginning of the work because all of the masses of data, the hundreds of samples that have been collected from the deep, plus thousands of uh, pieces of data that have been collected from the other activities, all need to be analyzed over the months and years ahead. And it's this body of work that will be produced that its hopes will help inform uh, world leaders about how best to take action in order to protect the oceans of our planet.